All right. Thank you so much, Hugh, for joining us on the podcast. No, thanks for having me. It's been um, it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks, but it's good to, to be up here. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks for coming because you, you're right on the Gold Coast at the moment, hey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've cool. been um, yeah been to and froing for the last couple of weeks, but been the Goldie for two years, but been down in Melbourne for a couple of weeks, but been meaning to come up here. I'm keen to see the new HQ. Um, yes. this is, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, yeah. It's not, not a shame that you're going now. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> but right. It's yeah. like not a, not a uh, stone's throw away from the new HQ, but, you know, only your plane's right, hey? Yeah, well, that's when I come back to Queensland, which will be... We, we do love it up here. We still got family up here. So, and to escape the cold weather in Melbourne, we'll be coming up here pretty regularly. So, I know that I've got a, a training hub to come to, which is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're probably, you know, most keen about is that little facility that we're going to have for, you know, athletes and, and anyone really to come the down staff, and train. Honestly, I think the staff I are going to love it almost as much as the athletes. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I'm kind of like, it's all about me. Yeah, that's um, right. I have a free <laughs> place to train. Yeah, so, no, it's good. Sure. And the rooftop as well is going to be pretty cool, like for events and things like that. Yeah. So, at the moment, you know, I had to kick someone out of here, um, Jade, who was on a meeting just to just to be able to have this room. So, yeah. at the moment, it's... You won't it's, have that problem, I don't think, by oh, the looks of it. Yeah, I hope not. Too much space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully that's the case. But um, but yeah, so I guess one of the first questions I ask everyone is how do you chase the vibe? Yeah. Well, I've, um, I guess I've always done it my way or been, always been authentic. Um, my vibe, like certainly chasing the vibe has evolved as I've had kids and I've moved around, but um, I grew up in Tassie. Um, so I surfed a lot, um, obviously trained a lot. My whole life's revolved around training, but I've always done it my way and with my mates and um, I've traveled a lot. I've traveled the world playing basketball, which has been which has been really cool. Um, but for me, I've always just enjoyed getting away and obviously I love what I do in, in terms of my sport and, and playing at a high level, but it's been the stuff away from my sport that I've always loved. And now it's family time. It's finding what works for them and living here on the Gold Coast has been fantastic and going to rock pools, going to theme parks, going on hikes, going to the beach. Like it's it's a pretty special place to be. I'll, I don't know if I'll get all those things where I'm heading in Melbourne, um, but we'll certainly find um, find things to do. But I guess whatever I've done and whatever vibe I've chased, I've just sort of done it my way and I've enjoyed it. Um, and now I get to do it with my family, which is really, really cool. And to be a part of LSKD and, and what they stand for and what they're about is something that really aligns with, with who I am and the person I am and um, the values that I have. So it's, it's pretty cool to, to be on board. So um, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. It's great to have you. Ultimate yeah. vibe chase, 100% aligned. Yeah. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Um, but you mentioned you grew up in Tassie. Is that where you were born? Yeah, I was born in Tassie. I've bounced around over the years. Um, evidently most recently as of a couple of weeks ago but I grew up on a coastal town about 45 minutes out of Hobart in a place called Cremorne um, which is sort of where you surfed down in, in, in Tassie when you wanted to. If you're in a 4-3 wetsuit, of course, you were, you were pretty rugged up down there. You have to be. You have to be, that's right. So I grew up down there, um, went to like a, a decent-sized public school and then uh, the, private, the only private school on the eastern shore of Tasmania was where I went to school. So I've still got my same friendship groups down there. My, it's, it's, that's my sister's the same she's a teacher now at the same primary school that we went to oh, wow. um we've had the same family home since i oh, so whatever 29 years now mm. so it's the same whenever i go back there everything's the same but um yeah i certainly love tassie and a big selling point for moving to north melbourne in melbourne is that they play four or five games in hobart and so they actually go and play home games on the ground that i grew up playing on so that's pretty that was cool a big, yeah big factor I moved away from home and I was 15 from oh, Tassie wow. so I haven't been there for so long haven't lived there for ages so to be able to play in front of friends and family is I haven't been able to do since I started playing high level it's sport pretty special sports so I'd be able to do that have my kids close to home um, yeah it's, it's pretty cool so Tassie's got a big place in my heart for sure yeah well I'm actually going there in February for the first time oh, yeah? hopefully you know we can actually yeah, you know, get Where out of Queensland oh, I think we're, we're flying into Hobart and yep. then kind of making our way up um, the, the coast and then I think Cradle Mountain and things like that. Yeah, I think that nice. the standard touristy yeah. things if you're going to go down gotta there. Pick, it's all about the time of year and you pick the, a good the time. time yeah. yeah. We're also yeah. going to go do a bit of mountain biking um, yeah, in Derby and I think there's another place we're going as well down near Hobart, like an hour away. Yeah. Um, so pretty stoked for that. Yeah, well, if you if, like the hiking there, the walking, mm. the trails, like Tassie is like – it's world class. It's yeah, sick. Yeah. So, if so you're I'm into pretty that stuff, pumped. You'll have a field day. You get like a camper and cruising around. Yeah. Well, the campers perfect. are actually cheaper than the high cars. At yeah. The, at, I don't know if it's just the time of year because it's most popular or yeah. what, but it's like you know two weeks in a in a camper van was just like a, like a thousand dollars cheaper than a oh, and like a it. Kia Rio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah. I don't think I know what I'm going to choose. Yeah. No, you picked the right um, one. So that's pretty that's exciting. Sick. Yeah. Um, but what did you get up to in like growing up in uh, in 
you know, Tassie? In Tassie? Uh, well, my family's been sport. So, like, my pop played in the AFL as well. He won three premierships. My dad was mm. um, played water polo for Australia. Um, my mum played WNBL, so National League Basketball. So, my life has revolved around sport. Wow. Um, no other options there. No, yeah, I was pretty – yeah. So, we were thrown, thrown into sport um, – at a young age, um, and that's, I guess, followed us through. Um, but like I said, I had a really close friendship group. My, my three best mates that I'm still, I mean, their weddings, they're only like all in hours, like still my best mates from when I was in kindy. Um, they live, one lives like 200 meters, the other one lives 300 meters, and the other one lives like a K down the road. So like, it's the same friendship group we've had forever. So I spent a lot of time playing sports with them, going to school, um, yeah, so I, I loved Tassie and basically our, our life was consumed by sport and then um, as we got older, we, despite all going our separate ways, we still we still hang out a lot. But Tassie's a beautiful place. I can't mm. wait. I love when people go. I yeah, love yeah. Up I was like, I so feel like I, I need to get a, a bit of a checklist yeah. of things I yeah, have yeah, to actually do. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I hope you get, yeah, if you get some good weather, which I'm sure you will at that time of year, yeah. you'll have a field day. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, yeah. I'm pretty pumped because we you know, haven't been able to go anywhere for yeah, a little true. while. So, yeah, I've actually got my own van that I take around around but Sick. i haven't i've just been able to do it around yeah. you know queensland at the moment but we couldn't drive like 30 hours down to no. tassie with it so would it make it you have to hide would you well, back it in to make it potentially yeah okay just a little that's ilo yeah. like will she make it i'm yeah. not sure <laughs> um but yeah so that's that's we had to hire one but that's all right yeah, that's um it. so what what sports did you play like growing up was it was it AFL or was it? Yeah, it start off as footy. Yeah, so it start off as footy. Um, you start playing Oz Kick when you're like four or five. So like Oz Kick was like the first thing that, that I started. Um, and then as I got a little bit older, um, I started playing a little bit of basketball. I said I basically said to mum like, I'll only play basketball if you coach me. She's like, all right. So we got a group of friends together from uh, from school. We went to go try out for this basketball team but they had too many numbers so they told us sorry so my mum was like nah, yeah nah. so basically like see you later so mum was like nah screw it we'll just get a bunch of friends from school and we'll just start our own team and go to our own little club so we found this little club that had no team and started up our team there so that was yeah under 10s and fell in love with it um and we our team ended up being pretty good for a number of years and by 15 i was playing for Tassie and then or 14 I was playing for Tassie and by 15 I was I moved to Canberra so it all happened within the space of five years that I was in playing a small club in Hobart to then moving wow. to, to Canberra as a 15 year old so it all happened really quickly so yeah um, but mum was mum was coach and she was stubborn too so yeah all, yeah she worked out pretty well yeah no that's good yeah. and so you moved to Canberra and and how long did, were you there for and what happened after yeah, that yeah so I went to um I went to nationals as for playing for Tassie. So when you go, you play against, you know, you play against Queensland, Victoria, WA. Um, so I went to, to Tassie and played all right um, playing for Tassie. So I got identified to go on my first overseas trip with the Australian Institute of Sport. So I went to Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we did a tour of Italy um, wow, for three weeks. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. How old were you then, sorry? I was yeah, I was still 15. Yeah, I was 15. Yeah, so Jet a bit of homesickness. Yeah, I know. I was 15, like going to Italy, like it was nuts. And yeah. then I got back from Italy and they were like, look, we we want you to, uh, to move to Canberra full time to the AIS, to the Institute of Sport in Canberra. And so um, it was a no brainer at mm. the time. So on the back of that Italy tour late in the year, in the new year, I moved to, to Canberra. And so I did four years in Canberra, the Australian Institute of Sport. So I didn't even get to finish year 10 in Hobart. I went to yeah. Canberra High School. I was just thinking about that. I was yeah. like, what did school look like? School was on the back burner for that. And I was like, those two or three years in um, in Canberra, were like, we're, it was basically you trained with the AIS. The, whole, the long-term goal is to develop athletes for the Olympic Games. Um, mm. But you start off with the junior national team program. So... I was traveling the world, like, I only reckon I went to my year 11 and 12, I was only there, like, 50% of the time. Otherwise, I was overseas touring. So, it was sick. Like, mm. I was living with, like, 13, 14 of, like, my best mate, like, my age, like, basketballers from all around, the handpicked from around the country and we were just touring the world. Like, it was the... That's pretty cool. It was the sickest time. We trained hard. Like, trained so hard. It was, mm. at the end of the day, we were weights, train, school, train, weight. Like, it was hectic, but traveled the world i've been to so many places so by the time i was 19 i traveled the whole world and represented my country and yeah it was cool i was it was nuts and then 
yeah, from then, from Canberra, I was off to the States after that. So that was where the next the next journey began. So that was, yeah, Canberra was, was an awesome time. But yeah, yeah, right. It was great. And, um, yeah, you moved, you know, you said school wasn't a big, you know, big deal. Not, not necessarily. It was a big the, deal. But it was a big deal, but it was more so on the, on the yeah. back burner because you, you had a career. You had yes. a, something to focus yes. on. But you did go to uni as well. Or did you do that in the States, go to college? Yeah, or? well, like school was... In order to get into the States, I had to make sure that I was hitting all the requirements in Australia. So while I was not there 50% of the time, I still had to do 100% of the work to yeah. be able to qualify and get into um, university or college in the States, which was which was a goal of mine. So um, there was there was homework done on those overseas tours, but it was it was hard to do. Um, but the teachers were really understanding, of course. But yeah. Yeah, you had to maintain certain grades and and stuff to be able to get into college in the states. So um, yeah, so I managed to do that and it took me three attempts to pass the test to get in because basically, like, depending on what your grades were, you had to get a test score that corresponded with it. Because I was not there a lot, my attendance scores were really low. So I only averaged mm. like a C plus in like eleven and twelve, which means I had to get like a ninety plus on this admissions test. Oh wow! Whereas if you had like well, if you maintain an A at school, It'd then you only need a really low test score. So I had to get a really, really high test score. Stitched yourself up. Yeah, I stitched slightly. myself up hard. So it took me like the third and final attempt to like pass this test to get in. Um, but I got in and um, how good went to went to the states and played basketball and got my degree in psychology. So mm. it all worked out pretty what, well. What was the choice behind psychology? Just of in, is it just interest to you? Or? Yeah. Oh well, my, my original plan was to do marine biology. But nice. I moved, to, yeah. So I loved like growing up in Tassie, being on in the coast yeah. on the water. Um, just loved it. My dad was worked in the marine department mm-hmm. in Hobart, so we grew around. We grew up around the ocean and grew up around animals too. Yep. Um, but I moved to a place called um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm-hmm. which was smack bang in the middle of the desert. <laughs> so they didn't offer no a fantastic. Marine yeah, there. They didn't offer a fantastic <laughs> uh, marine course, so I had to reevaluate where I wanted to go. And I guess my second passion was coaching. Um, and so I figured like, obviously, obviously well, two things is with psychology, it was, I felt like I was going to learn tools and learn things that were going to ultimately help mm. me in my career. But at the same time, it would help when if, whenever I transitioned into coaching to um, be able to learn techniques and strategies and on how to communicate and how to um, build relationships with with players and then also how pe- different people tick like each person and each mind is different so how to tap into what works for them or what not what not work for them so yeah that was a big big one for me is like all right i feel like that can be really valuable when i come mm. back to coaching if i've got that up yeah, my sleeve definitely yeah. and is that was that because in australia it's like a three-year yeah. degree is that similar in took the me states four, yeah it took yeah. me four so my scholarship was four years so again trying to find that balance between playing sport because obviously mm. my main goal was to make it as far as i could playing basketball but at the same time it's like all right i've got to make sure that i walk away with a degree and not walk away with nothing after four years so yeah. it was that part-time or full-time did it you? was full-time yeah because yeah. scholarship was four years typically if you're a, a regular student you take five or six because you you go to a class you might not like it you drop out of this class or you get distracted by living the college life and you've got time mm. so and you don't want your whole schedule filled up with classes you want to be able to enjoy yourself as well but because our scholarship's four years mm. you've got to get it done in four years so we're taking maximum classes in short amount of time so it was chaos it was fun but it was chaos it would have been because yeah. it's like that balance and, and i've only seen it from movies you yeah know, that college yeah, course, lifestyle yeah. um but then sport is so big over there yeah. as well yeah but then it's yeah finding that balance so that you don't get sidetracked yeah. and go off that way or you know yeah but then you still want to live your you know your yeah. best life as yeah, well you do. yeah you kind of states and you live in cold like every kid's dreams like live in america and go to school so mm. it certainly had its it certainly had its distractions and i probably didn't balance it out at the right way at times and I I dare say there's a correlation between my basketball was here when I got there and it slowly by the end of it it was down here Um, but thankfully when I got back to Australia I was got the head back on straight and I think that was a big thing for going to football was it it was a fresh start um, and Mm -hmm. I was able to tap into what got me to that level before college initially was working hard and staying focused and maintaining goals and Mm. um doing it all the right way so i guess that was a big big thing for me was 
yeah, basketball sort of got distracted by the lifestyle that mm. in college. Um, so to be able to come back and play footy and have a fresh start, it's mm. worked out well. And clearly, yeah, there was things yeah. in place. That, <laughs> things yeah, have worked out well. Things have worked out okay, <laughs> thankfully in the end. But there were times where, yeah, I was having probably a bit too much fun. That's yeah. for sure. Oh, that's yeah. all right. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> you, you would have been young too. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. exactly. 19, 20, yeah. moving to the other side of the world, like... I think to be disciplined enough to pursue that, you know, yeah. and, but also have those distractions at that age is, yeah. is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, the transition yeah. to, from basketball to footy, like, what did that, what did that look like? Oh. How did that happen? <laughs> yeah. So that was brutal. That was brutal. Like, I was pretty fit basketballer, but football is a different beast. Um, football. I yes. remember I rolled in. I went to so. I, when I finished college, I went to um, I signed with the Perth Wildcats in the NBL, mm-hmm. but I was only there, probably there for about a month or month or two before I ended up deciding to go and play footy. Um, but I just went to Perth, did the testing there, and I won our like our fitness test. So I rolled into to Adelaide at the Crows, thinking, I don't know, I just won the fitness test. Like this, you'll be, be right. I'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> and I'm coming dead last in the footy condition, like different, like the the. Basketball was a yo-yo, short, sharp, up and down, like a beat test. Yep. And oh, then, beat test. Yeah, 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 the dreaded, <laughs> yeah, the dreaded beat test. So I won, like, won that, feeling good about myself, and then rolled into um, to Adelaide and they did a, they do a 2K time trial, like basically uh, two-kilometer time trial and came dead last. So just a completely out. different fitness. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, different fitness. So it was a real eye-opener. But again, it was a good re- another good reality check. It's like, all right, this is not going to be what you thought it was going to be. You're not just going to roll you got to pull play. your socks up and AFL actually. Football. I haven't played for eight years just thinking it was going to be the same, but mm. it's that it changed. So. Completely it different. Was a, yeah, it was a bit of a shock. Yeah, sure. like you said, you probably had to screw your head on there and go, all right, you know, I've got to up my training to get in line with the rest yeah. of the boys. Yeah. That, that brings me to my next question is like, what does the training look like? Yeah, it's um again, it's a different a different beast. But I guess being at the AIS at such a young age, I knew what a professional environment looked like, and I knew what you like time management, what scheduling looked like, what recovery looked like, like what being an athlete was like. So I've, I wasn't a typical draftee going to a football club. I was an eighteen year old coming from school, mm. coming from living at home, coming from, you know what I mean? Yeah. Coming from interstate. You like already I'd had like a stuff. lifetime experience. Yeah, yeah. So I came. Yeah, like I'd tra- like yeah. So when I came in. Um, I was ready to go from that. I think oh, clearly that helped me, but it was just getting my football up to speed. So I was I, everything away from footy. I was I was fine with, but it was getting my football, my skills, mm. and my fitness base and all that up to up to speed. So it took a year. Like I was no good for a long. Like I was no good for a year. Like I was I was awful for a year. And I was like, oh, I've made the wrong choice here. Like I'm no self doubt. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. And then ended up like it was sort of late in the year and. I had like the goal. Like, I hadn't really hit many goals that year, um, and I like I remember sitting down with my old man. He's like, Mate, I, he's, I was like, I don't like eight years ago was the last time I played footy. Like I don't remember what I was good at back then. Like I just knew like I was okay, but I remember what I was good at. And he's like, oh man, I just remember you used to be really good at tackling. He's mm-hmm. like, so I just remember you used to tackle everyone. You used to love to like. That's just what you used to do. So I was like, all right, I've got five or six games left in the season. Like I'm just going to focus on that and. Um, now it's now played like ended up f- because of focusing on that one that one small element of the game it just opened up all these other things um, in in footy and so had a really strong back end of that year and ended up debuting the following year and playing in a grand final like losing but playing in a grand wow. final and now for like the past two years I've led the league in the AFL in tackles so like that's wow. just yeah how from important just a small chat from, was that that yeah, chat that chat with dad just be like. Just focusing on what what your strengths going are. Going back to the you're roots. Going of, back to your roots yeah. and focusing what you're good at and what your strengths are. Not worrying about. For me, like I couldn't run. Like I wasn't a good runner. I wasn't a good kick. I wasn't good at this. It's like, all right, that stuff will take some time. But yeah. let's focus on what, what you're, you're really good at. good at, and then let the other stuff evolve. So, Hone in on that. Yeah. and that's the thing. And, and I think when you're, you're self doubting as well, you look at others and you're like, oh, you know what's going on with me yeah. but it's it's kind of also like they've got their strengths and weaknesses as well yeah. and like you know they might be really shitty at, yeah, at, yeah. at a tackle and and you're like oh well that's that's my thing yeah 100 percent. yeah um so yeah and that was was that with um adelaide you said yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. That was with the and how yeah. long were you with them for was it the crows for for four years so um yeah played played in a grand final in my first year which is pretty epic nuts played the mcg in front of a hundred thousand wow. like and just that, thought that that atmosphere. Yeah. 
Yeah. That would have been insane. It was nuts. It was nuts. And like even, I've, have you been to, have you spent much time in Adelaide before? Never. No. No. Like Adelaide Oval was like, the ground is insane. So like, mm. so the pit in Albuquerque, where we played in Albuquerque basketball, we'd sell out every night. We had like 15,000, 16,000. Like our arena was, yep. they spent $60 million on our reno. Our oh, wow. Renos. So the facilities there were nuts. So the stadium was epic. Adelaide Oval, same thing, freshly renovated, like full sell out, 50,000 every night, hectic. Then to go to the G in front, play in front of 100,000 was was nuts. And it was my first year, so it was one of those things like, oh, this is my first, this is great. This is gonna, Our team's unreal. Like our team was, mm. we've won the minor premiership that year. Like our team's so good. We're going to just be here every year. Yep. And then we lost to Richmond who thankfully ended up being a really good team as time went on. They've won like three or four flags in the past like mm. since. And so at the time, we're like, oh, we're the best team. We just lost like can't believe we just lost, but they end up being good, so we can sleep a little bit. Yeah, better at yeah, night. no, definitely. But like, it's one of those things. It's like, oh, this is what it's going to be like every year, and then haven't played in a finals game since. Yeah, it's been it's been three, four, five years, six years, mm-hmm. five years, and I haven't even played a finals game yet. So it's crazy how like, yeah, if you take, yeah, if you, I didn't just take don't it for take granted, it. but like, well, next time it comes around, you won't. <laughs> I will not. No, that's right. Like, to, like, yeah, you don't know how hard it is. Yeah, and in like going back to that atmosphere. Was that – did that – do you think that helped your game on the day or do you think that kind of hindered it where it was like this is freaking a bit – like this is full on? I, it was, I hope I don't – I think I was a little bit oblivious, again, because it's my first year. But like I guess playing in playing in front of sellouts before, like I felt like I was sort of ready for it. <clears throat> um, so actually like I played okay at the start and ended up doing like – I ended up doing both my calves – in the, in the granny or both my celiuses in the granny so one went the first quarter and then the other one went like in the third so like I was no good um, but Far out. yeah so that's that's I actually yeah, like started okay and then just fell off and then like the whole group we we're only down like it's all a bit of a blur now we're only down like a goal at half time but like we walked into the rooms and it felt like like we were down like 10 goals mm. and then we came out after, after half time with that same sort of like energy I don't know why and then Richmond just smoked us. Yeah. Like it was all downhill from there. But no, I, I felt why. like I really, I I really loved it. Like, kicked it. like kicked a goal and remember like the crowd like just like deafening. Like had like I had like 10 of my like, my best mates, mum, dad, sister, like just right behind the goals where I kicked the goals. I remember pointing up to them. It was like on the day it was, it was That's... probably one of the highlights of my career, like kicking a goal in grand final day yeah. and having them all here, all there watching. Like, it was, Almost, it gives me it goosebumps, nice. yes, hey? Yes, like, yeah, I was even there. Much, yeah, it's, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, right. And um, from the Crows, like, in that whole journey, like, where where was the next Yeah, so step? basically after the grand final, the, we went on this, I don't know, you may or may not know, footy players, footy fans will know, we went on this controversial camp, this mindfulness camp. So I don't I know don't, if you know, no, you don't, don't know. Like, we went on this, like, controversial, um, like, the, the idea was to take us to the next step. Like, clearly our football was good enough, but on the day, Maybe guys went mindset. missing. So it's like, oh. all right, we need like, we need to strengthen the mind. Yeah. So we went on this really controversial mind camp okay. that messed up. It pushed the boundaries a bit too much. And, it, yeah, there was – anyway, there's a few things that went wrong with it and it ended up blowing up the club. Like, it ended up um. splintering the club. So – yeah, um, okay. It's because some people were for it, some people weren't for it. So it really divided the club. So that's what that's why we never went back. We never made it back because mm. the whole club just blew up. And so when the year, so that was so that was that year. We didn't we had some injuries too, and then the next year it was the same. It was still like so. I took like two or didn't end up doing an investigation last. Year. So I took three or four years for them to finally like put the camp to bed. So the year that I left, ten other players left. They did wow. an external review, so they had to get someone from the like outside of the football club to review the the club. So, you know, getting rid of the head coach, the head of football, the head assistant coach, like they had a massive yeah. All right. so startup clean out. It was so a lo- it was a lot going on. It was a lot going on. So the, yeah, so I was one of those players that ended up getting moved on because um, the club was basically starting again, and so that's why that's how I found myself um, up on the Gold Coast. So mm. yeah, it was a pretty wild time, but got an unreal opportunity to head to the Gold Coast and basically be a part of something that was – they were going through a similar process in starting again, I suppose. So to come up here and 
be a part of us to build a culture and build a, an environment with a lot of young guys again my passion was coaching and helping young players so come up here and train and play with them was was a selling point and living on the Gold Coast and chasing the vibe up here was definitely a, a selling point yeah. too. Yeah. Like you said earlier, it's a, a bit of a vibe chasing place as <laughs> yeah, well. You know, it's yeah, like, like beaches, no hinterland, yeah. theme parks, especially, um, you know, being a dad as well, yeah. being able to, you know, go down the beach, but also, yeah, yeah head anywhere else. Yeah. It's kind of, um, yeah. How is dad life? Dad life's hectic. Yeah. Dad life is nuts. So we were 20 weeks pregnant when we made the call to come up here. So we actually, we hadn't had Titus yet, but that was yep. a big thing for us was, where could we go to raise a family? So, um, yeah, another Titus selling was born point. In, yeah, so mm. we moved up in December and Titus was born in February and COVID kicked in in March. So, yeah, it's been, but thankfully Queensland's been pretty, yeah, it's been good. It has, yeah. But, yeah. In comparison, in comparison especially to the rest of the oh world, gosh, yeah. I, we can't complain. Like, well, when I was leaving Adelaide, it was either go to a club in Melbourne or go, come to the Gold Coast, like, <laughs> Thank God I ended up coming here. Yeah. I'm like, I've been stuck Melbourne in got like, smashed too. Like you go down, like I've been in there for, down there for the last two weeks and it's like a little bit of PTSD, but you can sort of feel like... Different energy? A or? different energy. And it's like, a, like they always reflect on it. It's like, oh, this lockdown. We, oh, like, oh, how weird does this feel? Like mm. like we had a, like a Christmas drinks break up just gone on the weekend. And the boys like, yeah, we haven't been able to get together and have drinks for two years. Wow. It's like everything's... The moment the season finishes, everything's locked down. So like... And you're kind of like, oh, that was me yeah. every weekend. That was me. Yeah, that was the, yeah, that was the boys. Yeah, every weekend. So um, yeah, made a made a good call coming up here yeah. in the end. Yeah, yeah but for dad sure. life's hectic. It's but again, yeah, it's. I feel like changes your whole perspective. Being an athlete, you have to have some good time management. Yes, that's what yeah. I've I've now learned as well from yeah, you. Yeah. I was like, time management and balance is yes. is key. If you don't yeah. have that, you're no. kind of stuffed. No. So I guess. Do you think that's helped with dad life? Yeah. With like, you know, scheduling things and making sure it all yeah. runs smoothly? That's the biggest thing. And like I said at the start, like, I think the reason I'm able to love what I do for so long is that I've found other avenues away from sport. Like, so when I come to training every day, I can basically leave whatever baggage I've got at the front door and train and have fun. And Yeah. Because I'd love it. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't consume me. Like, mm. obviously, you can get these athletes that are like your MJs, your Kobe's, where like, basketball 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 yep. like love it live and breathe it got to be in the gym 24 7 mm-hmm. but as and then there's other athletes that aren't always like that they like to get away from their sport but yeah i'm someone that when i'm in the four walls i just train and empty the tank while i'm there so then when i leave i can mm-hmm. enjoy life away from from sport yep. so i've found i've found a, a really good balance and i think we're finding more and more these days that kids and i, I mean social media has a bit to do because Often back in the day, you used to leave the footy club and you you That's might it. read about it in the paper, but like mm. you can't escape you can't escape the sport in the workplace these days. Like you can't you get you get home and you can't pick up your phone without having seen sport and footy and this and that. So I've seen more and more people take mental breaks from from mm. sport because they just can't get away from it. Yeah. But yeah. I think what I I think what's really important, what I think what's worked for me is just finding that. Um, space and time away from the game mm. um and, but kids will do that to yeah. you whether you you don't have a choice though the, the, you know what i mean like so it's, it's been a great distraction but um yeah well that's it i think um you know there's there's being physically fit and then there's also being mentally yeah. fit as yeah. well and that's a 100%. whole nother ball game yeah. um <laughs> no yeah. pun intended no, yeah, actually, no. No yeah, fun. Yeah. um and having your family for that is, yeah. is pretty important do you have any other like hobbies that that's what that's your time just to to clear the the brain of all of yeah, everything else i used to play we used to play a lot of xbox oh yeah back in the day. yeah pre-kids but, like, for me, I never played games that were, like, single-player games. I used to play just, like, all the boys, like, on, on the way yeah, from training. used to, like, boy, like, have in the showers after the room, like, what time are you getting home? Like, let's go. Let's go. Get on. What so games were you on? Oh, we were on, for, oh, like, we're on Fortnite forever, Halo forever. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, just. Classics. It was all just about the banter. We were never, like, we were okay. We were never that good. Yeah. But it was just about. A good good time. Banter. Yeah. Again, it was another yeah. thing. We'd get away from footy. Like, we'd just go there and hang out and just, like, talk. So it was mostly and, all the footy boys yeah. that would jump on. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But then even like, and my mates back home too. That was like the way that we stayed in touch. Oh, like, that's like, good. Yeah, let's like jump on. Like you're on the line for an hour or two, so like you're chatting away and playing. Yeah. Like, so that was good. But then since being up here, like surfing, mm. um, obviously got my degree in psych. Haven't yeah. haven't taken that further yet. But now that I'm the big thing for going to North was to transition into coaching. So going mm. down that coaching path now and putting things in place away from 
footy to doing courses and stuff to transition into coaching. So, but the kids take up about ninety percent of the time. I'll get an hour or so on my day off to go for a surf, but yeah. it's mainly kid stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. I'm not a you know mum myself, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got some in here, and it's even yeah. Jason. You know, yeah, yeah, he's well, just he like, said, yeah, dropping the kids. kids he missed a meeting he this morning because he's yeah, yeah, dropping he's the kids, the off, kids off, off. I had to, sick, yeah. I had to cancel a meeting for him. He's like, I'm so sorry, but I've got to go to Hendy's. Yeah. Um, like preschool Christmas presentation oh, and I'm yeah. like no worries mate yeah. like especially for kids like if it was something else I would have been like nah not odd yeah, 100%. yeah but, that's <laughs> but I was the, like yeah. if it's for, for Hendy and he's you know his little Christmas breakup yeah. party I'm like you know I'll yeah. cancel anything for yeah, you kind of 100%. thing that's it's great yeah like, the family should always come first I think mean, that's 100% that's really cool. I yeah. was like respect <laughs> yeah 100% absolutely um, but yeah okay cool yeah. and um, what is your like how, how's your experience been on the Gold Coast in the Suns? We've loved it. Like it's only been it's only been two years. We feel like we've been here for for a long time, um, and each experience is different, and each club is unique. But this one's been really cool, and I like they were the ones that were willing to give me another chance at AFL level. Like the Crows obviously weren't they weren't willing to give me another crack at it. So Gold Coast, like mate, we love what you do. We want to give you another crack at AFL, and I come up here, and coincidentally, when you have someone that believes in you. Yeah, and, and you repay the faith in a way so this is a club that was like we love you for this and we believe you can do this and you come in here and ended up playing career best football since I've been here yeah. and it's not a coincidence because it was once you get that backing from someone and you get the support behind you mm-hmm. like your confidence just skyrockets so that's nice yeah so the club was unreal in that way um, and so that's why it was so hard to to leave um, but when the, the North Melbourne opportunity presented itself um Again, that was they were like, "This is what we think we, this is what we have planned for you. This is what we yeah. need. Like our club needs you and wants you for these reasons. Like, yeah. can you come and help us? And can you yeah. can you help us get where we want to get to? And it was basically the same conversation that I had with the Suns two or three years ago. And so I feel like now that I'm now that I've left, I've sort of fulfilled that purpose. Basically, come up here and help this young Gold Coast midfield come along and get where they want to get to and then eventually hand over the key. So I felt mm. like I was at that point where you could do that. I've done what I've done and these guys were ready to take the keys and take the club to the next level where they want to get to. So mm. that's why I leave bittersweet because I would love to have seen it all the way through, but yep. I feel I feel like I'm leaving at a time that I'm confident that they're heading in a, a really good direction and now I get to do something that I loved yeah. again down in North Melbourne and help out a young group. Um, get where they want to get to. For so. sure. It was, you know, hot topic, wasn't it? Yeah, it blew up really. Yeah, I think just how it all worked out, it blew up it's, pretty quickly. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I um I didn't really fully grasp it, yeah. like, from reading it. I yeah. was like, okay, so, you know, contract gets kind of shredded, but yeah. then it kind of gets put back on. That was the yeah. plan. So I, I was like, okay. And then there was, like, kind of a, a small window where, you know, another club could be like, all right, sweet, you know, yeah. this is our offer. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's, it's like yeah. I think it's hasn't really happened before, so I think that's why. And there's yeah. a bit of it, like, because it's it's like a loophole, so it's like really hard. Like even when I was trying to explain it to family and stuff, like, yeah, because you see the word delisting, like, so basically, like Gold Coast delisted me, which means they like got rid, got of, rid me, of me, but you. they weren't mm, like that wasn't they were only doing it plans. as a loophole to basically help the club. The club has to make a certain amount of changes every year to for AFL guidelines so like oh technically yeah it looks like we're ripping your contract up but we're technically we're just going to give you the same one but it's just a ticker box mm. and in that short time when my contract was ripped up I was I was a delisted free agent like I was technically yeah. uncontracted and so North were like you are technically uncontracted right now which means we can technically and offer you my, a new one yeah. yeah and so we told them like it would take a lot for us to pack up and move because we love it here and they were like, they basically called our bluff. They're like, we want you, we need you. Like, what would it take to get you down here, you and your wow. family down here? And so that's how it all I, I, worked out. Yeah, I think there's definitely some pros, like you've listed as well, well you know, having your family, being yeah. able to go down to, to Tassie as well and play. And yeah. yeah, it just sounds like it aligns perfectly for where you are at the moment and yeah. like where you want to head. Great opportunity. You can't, you got to put yourself first as well. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah. I think that's a it's exciting times yeah yeah it is exciting because i remember, and then i remember because at the same time all the lskd we were sort of working out how i was going to be involved here and i thought a big reason for for coming on board was to because i was a gold coast local and a queensland local so i remember getting on the phone to beck and i'm like oh look i'm i'm sorry this is what's happening like i understand if like you guys want to go in a different direction because like the whole idea was i thought it was going to be a gold coast thing You're like nah we're with you for who you oh, are yeah. and what you stand 100%. for 100 percent 
um, we'd still love to have you on board. So mm -hmm. here we are. So I'm pumped. So I was worried. Yeah, I was worried that yeah, oh, I was no. going to leave LSKD behind as well on the Gold Coast. Yeah. But they were still keen. Jace is still keen to have me, which is oh, 100%. Is cool. We're stoked to have yeah. you on board. Yeah, you know? no, it's great. We're we're you know our goal is to be a global brand as yeah. well. So um, this is just the beginning, and you know. Like I said, you're only planes, you know, only a flight away to come yeah. and come and join us whenever we'll try, we have yeah, things we'll going we'll try on. Together, for sure. Oh, far yeah. out! <laughs> cardio yeah, is not okay. maybe some weights. Yeah, like, we yeah, let's weights, do yeah. that. We'll avoid the cardio. Um, so, and you said you've kind of been flying down at the moment yeah. um, to Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. I've had two jobs. I went down to train. Was job number one and two was to find a house for us to move to. But I haven't quite ticked off job number two yet. So we'll find a. a We'll find a place, and we've always, as because as I've spoken, I've always bounced around between mm. Tassie to Canberra to the states. I lived in Vegas for three months. Oh, really? Yeah, I, yeah, lived in Perth for two months, and then so like I've bounced around. So and we've always rented. So we're going to go to Melbourne and, and buy a house and make it a, a family home for yeah, the next nice. couple of years, which we're which we're pumped about. But we just got to find the right one. In the meantime, we'll keep bouncing up here to the to the Gold Coast and maximise yeah. our time up here before we move down. Yeah. It's, that, that's the thing. You're probably used to having to go and find places to live. Yeah. You probably got to, like, you, you have some connections down there, obviously, with, now with all the, your teammates. Yeah. Were you saying that people have been trying to help you find places, like, yeah. to live and things like that? Yeah, it's been cool. So, being when we were in Adelaide, um, there was probably only three or four guys on the team that were from Adelaide and the rest were, in a, were from interstate. And obviously, mm -hmm. the big, like, Melbourne's the hub of footy, the home of footy. So, mm -hmm. a large majority of our teammates in Adelaide were from Victoria. So, we built a really strong friendship group there just from all of moving, not having anyone other than the footy club and the partners and wives and girlfriends as well. So they didn't have anyone when they moved over. So mm. they have a really strong friendship group. And now they've sort of, over the years, as they've retired and moved on, they've moved back to Melbourne. So there's probably seven or eight teammates from Adelaide with wives, with kids. Mm. So to be able to go back and spend time with them and have Kirsten um, and the kids spend time with them helps as well. It takes a bit of pressure off. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. And um, a similar profile to the Suns in that the North are a really young group. So um, it's, it keeps, I guess it'll keep me young for a little while longer yet. But it's, um, yeah, we'll have friends over there and you make friends at the footy club. It's great. It's easy for players because you walk in and you've automatically got 40 new friends. Yeah. Because like... But it's harder on the partners and the families as well. Yeah. So, but to have that outside, but yeah, for me it's great because I can. I was going to ask that. Make Forty new friends. Is it? Is it? I guess you'd know certain players that are in there. Yeah. But like, is it a bit? I don't know. Somewhat daunting, just yeah. going into a new place. And you're like, hey, hey, guys. Yeah, it's completely daunting. And <laughs> yeah. you know, what, like, you know, what, mate, Australia is like Australia's right now. Like, they've got their like they've got their names and they've got a random ass nickname that has nothing to do with them at all. But like, that's just like. A real Aussie thing and a real football club thing too. So yeah. like, you go in there and they introduce themselves. But like, oh, it's hi, I'm James. This is Hugh. Yep. And then, but then out on the track, mm. and then this time of year they've all got hats on. They're all got the same uniform on, and then they've all got nicknames. So learning the names is the big one oh. too. But yeah, it's, do you have it's, any nicknames for you? No, nah, they're all. Yeah, I've stitched myself up. I stitched myself up. So one of the guys called me Greeny, and I've never had Greeny. I've never not liked Greeny, but I've never had Greeny. Yep. And so one of the coaches called me Greeny in front of the group, and they were like, "To people like Green, like is it all right if I call you Greeny?" I'm like, "If oh, you no. want." I was like, oh. <laughs> I sort of said no without saying yes. He's like, "Well, what are you? What's your nickname?" I'm like, "No." Oh. I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "What's your nickname?" He's like, "Well, it's not Greeny." And so from then on, it's been Greeny. So like, once you, yeah, you stitch yourself from now on, it's been now everyone just calls me Greeny. Because so. you can't give yourself a nickname, nah. but then for you not wanting that, yeah, it's kind of like, well, like, that's yeah. going to be your nickname. Footy clubs love stitching you up. So yeah. You may, yeah. So like, what's your nickname? Not Greeny. All right. Well, it's Greeny. That's now. Greeny now. It's Greeny now. So hundred yeah, percent. I um. I've been done. I. I, I love like hearing all the nicknames and things yeah. like that. And even just like other players calling other people, like even if it's not like a known nickname. Um, I was, I interviewed oh, Sam Hazlitt from the, the Brisbane Heat. Yeah. Um, and I was listening, he has a podcast as well. I was listening to one of their episodes and um, Manus Labashain was saying, oh, I call on the field, I call him Dave. <laughs> it's just like, there's no reason about yeah. it. And Sam's just like far out, like, 
you know, and it's just like, where the freaking hell has this come from? But yeah. it's like, it's not greeny. Well, now it freaking is because yeah. that's not what you yeah. want. No. So it's the same thing. It's like he didn't want that and now that's like, you and know. It sticks. Yeah, it's going it to absolutely there's no, stick. There's no coming back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, I, I can't believe the life you've lived. Mm. Like I only, I kind of knew a few little bits and pieces, but to live all around the world and like, do you have a favourite thing or part about what you do? what you've done that's that's a tough one like like i said i've been so blessed to be able to have lived the life that i have and i still feel like there's still plenty to go clearly i mean i'm 29 so i've still got years left in this in the system here so but yeah i've traveling the world like again you don't same similar with grand final you don't take you don't take it for granted but like looking back on it now it's like I can't mm. imagine but like how lucky I was to do that. Like, and I was 100%. all like, this is all expenses paid for. Like, I was traveling the world with yeah. the national team, so like, I never like all expenses all paid done. for. But then also, you you got a and salary living, as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. Like, it was like, <laughs> yeah, like I was able to travel the world with my best mates. Like, 12, 13 of my best mates playing basketball for, for like from when I was nineteen, like oh, fifteen onwards. Like, it was mm. so that was a big one for me. Is traveling the world was was cool and then like because i've stopped in all these places you just meet amazing people as well yeah like i've got to like trying to plan a wedding is nuts because like who am i going to invite who am i not going to invite like who's in the wedding like because you go to a different and you make a best mate is that what you're in the middle of doing at the moment yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, Yeah. right so we got engaged oh uh, congrats last year yeah yeah, so you've pushed it out then. Yeah, we'll go, yeah, COVID. yeah, COVID. Yeah, push it I'm out. I'm in the yeah, same boat. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. I'm just, I'm like September next year yeah, is when we're yeah. getting married because yeah. I'm like, I can't. No, yeah, we're the same. Yeah, so like trying to plan a wedding, like trying to make a, sh- trying to make a list and then a short list, like. Have you decided what state gonna you're going to get married in? No, nah? country. Yeah. We don't know what country because so much. Kirsten's from America. Oh yeah. So she was a ch- classic spe- tail you know. cheerleader. <laughs> I was basketballer. So like. Um, Oh. Meet, do we have two? Like, do we have like two? Yeah. Do we have a party in each one? Do we meet? We go, that I think makes it a bit more meet complex. In, yeah, meet halfway or meet in Hawaii or Fiji and that Wouldn't cuts be off bad. people. To, like, if people are really keen to come, they'll they'll yeah. come to a destination wedding. So You might need a big venue. Yeah. Just yeah. an outdoor space. I don't know. But now we're trying to buy a house too. It's like, what would you rather? What's you know the what priorities I mean? What's at the, the moment? priorities a house too. Yeah, so. definitely. But yeah, the big ones meet, like you meet so many cool people along the way. Mm. Um, so I've made like lifelong friends with different interests and different life life experiences and perspective, like from all different parts of the world is mm. is really cool. So mm. pick up my phone and I'll give a message from a mate from the States or I've got a message from my best mate in Perth or boys from Tassie like what are we doing for New Year like that's yeah, great it's, it's yeah. Cool. yeah great circle that you've got yeah exactly mm. so traveling the world and meeting people's probably the, yeah. the best thing I'm yeah. going to flip it what's probably the most challenging thing that I don't know that's probably changed over the times yeah. but is it like having a family and having to to yeah, I guess at the moment you're having to fly in and out at the moment. Yeah. Is that pretty challenging? Yeah, or? the work life balance is, is hard as, it, as as an athlete it always is. So in any in any like yeah, any 100%. workplace here, I'm we're sure, here. Like, yeah. However many <laughs> yeah, hours exactly, a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So work they like work life balance is a big one. Um, I guess living away from home was living away from home was okay, but not having direct access to family was mm. was probably the hardest thing and. We haven't spoken about it today, but mum was sick for a long time. So she passed mm. away from breast cancer in, just after the grand final in 2017. So wow. um, she was sick basically for when I was deciding to go to America or not. But she was like, you got to go. Like It's been your dream forever. you got to go. So I was like, I, I went. And so that was, it was you wrestle with that guilt because obviously they hot. She hit a lot of things mm. while I was away to not get the extent of it, but to not be able to spend as much time with her she they came over a lot so that was that was the hardest thing was being away from family in that element obviously and then when she passed away as well so that's been how old, the most how old were you i was 23 or 24 mm. when she passed away yeah so yeah it's my after yeah my second year in adelaide or my my first year at afl level so yeah that's why again it's, i thought that fairy tale was going to go so much different when i went from basketball to footy like yep. and then playing with grand that final happening. no and that was probably going to be we sort of knew it was probably going to be mum's last game yep. so we scripted it going a lot differently so that was losing a grand final losing her and ended up having surgery on both my Achilles like my cars were cooked so I ended up having surgery on both my Achilles and missing a big chunk all That's in space huge. of like and the worst I mean like 
And then another, like, we flew to the States to get away. Mm. And then two days later, I got a call from mum saying, like, you got to, you have to come home. So yeah, we were in the right. States for, like, two days, turned around, came home. Like, it was everything just compounded in, like, yeah. a month period of time. So that was, yeah, the adversities that happen in sport all the time, but mine just seemed to all happen at once. So. Yeah, that's that's yeah. full on. Yeah. 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 I, um, yeah, my mum passed away when I was seven. So, yeah, yeah, I was seven, yeah. Five, so, that's so just, it was cancer as well. Yeah. Um, so it's it's I can I understand yeah. like it's it's crazy. Seven's, yeah, um, seven's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, young, uh, like I think though, I'm not going to say pros, but no, you know no, what I mean. Like say. different ages. Yes. You know, I didn't actually really know what was going on. Mm. So it's it's kind of like, you know. Yeah, I know. But then but then growing up, class. yeah, you like really would have loved to have mum like on these especially being a female like you know along, yes. along these journey like the journey with me yeah. but yeah for you it's yeah it's you do know what's going on yeah do you know what I mean yeah that was what and for mine, mine's a fit like the same with you like when my kids grow up yeah when they're that age or when they like so they won't have that yeah that grandmotherly oh, and influence it's, it's which in, is like you can't important. Yeah. yeah you can't replicate so that's a big one for me yep. is like oh, like obviously I'm upset about it, mm-hmm. clearly, mm. not having mum. But for me, it's like, well, the kids not having their, their nan or their yeah. grandma. Is, is, it, it, that is kind of hits. Yeah, yeah, that hit home, sure. hits home more now, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Full on. Take a bit of dark turn, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, no, it's, yeah. It's authentic, though. It's, it's, it's yeah. part of it. It's the journey. Someone's going to listen to this and have the same experience. Yeah, 100%. Experience. Yeah. We've all, that's the shitty thing. It's like yes. we've all been through yes. something similar. Yeah. Um, so it's just like... Being open to chat about it as well, I think, yeah. is really important. And knowing that you're like you're not alone, like with this, yeah, like 100%. being able to be open and just you know, if yeah, I'm starting to go into that mental health no, path yeah, where I'm I mean, like, talk to someone actually, if you need yeah, to. But. It does, but actually, and if it coincidentally it ties back to why I'm sitting here today in a mm. way, because when Beck, when Beck messaged me on Instagram, she's like, oh, this is LSKD. I'm, I'm I don't know if you know, like, um, we'd love to have you on board. Like, this is us. If you want to do a bit more research and get to know us, let us know what you think. And I'm like, okay, yep. So first thing I did, went on the LSKD website. This was in October. And the first thing that came up was the breast cancer range. Yeah. And so it's like, That's, how cool is that? It's like, yeah. oh, this is instantly, it's like, oh, this is something that I'm passionate about. Yep. I'm, my, like I'm, I'm an ambassador for Breast Cancer Network mm. Australia. Like my thing is I wear pink boots, wear pink laces, wear pink yep. mouth guard like, and this is a brand that's supporting, supporting yeah, for sure. something that I'm passionate about. It's like... I don't, I don't think yeah. I even need to click any further. And then and doing to learn that, more and more, but like that was a funny. I opened the first thing came up. And that Here's was the it. pink range. Here's breast. This is what we're doing for breast. This is what the farms are doing for breast cancer mm. in Australia. It's like, how cool is that? And yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And like, you know, prior to now we were 70% male business and now mm. we're at 70% female business. Um, and it was crazy when we did um, announce that that's what we wanted to do and we're going to donate, um, hoping to donate X amount and things like that. The amount of people in the in the DMs going like, th- like thanks, yeah. like because this yeah. is something that's affected us. And you know we're learning. We, we you know next year we we'll want to do it even bigger and better. Yeah. We're still going to learn and grow and how we can support that. But it was it was so crazy just to see everyone jumping in you know DMs and being like yeah. thanks for doing it. And I'm yeah. like oh that's nice. You yeah, know. and it's something so small. It's just like yeah we're gonna you know like but it means so mm. much. It's like we're gonna do some pink stuff and people are gonna buy it. We're gonna donate. It's yeah, like, yeah. But like it has a massive mm. profound impact. So I think that's um, definitely moving forward. We want to like work with different people, yeah. like different um, organisations. Yeah, for sure. yeah, like, that's why. And that'd yeah. be awesome yeah, um, to have you with you know on that. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is a crazy, crazy chat. I've, yeah. been, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but one one thing I wanted to ask before we kind of wrap up as yeah. well is, I guess you know, joining a new club now, like. Wow, that was loud. That was loud. The Renos are going on here too. Yeah, yeah Deacon. Everyone's, Deacon. everyone's keen to get out. Like, let's it's just not until like next everything. year, but yeah. we're pulling the tables let's apart. Get, we're yeah. done. Christmas is here. Um, but yeah, what is your, I guess you talk, spoke about coaching. Like, is that the the goal? Like, is that what your future will hold for you hopefully? Or? Yeah, yeah. For, to, make, to, to make the call to head to, to North was to how am I going to best set up myself, which in turn ultimately sets up the family Mm. um and so to um add some more years to my career and um and to have a plan in place to then transition into coaching like it's i've i'm at a stage in my career whether i like it or not i have to start thinking uh, like 
what my next chapter mm. is. And as athletes, we're, you, you, it's like I'm going to play sport forever. I'm going to play play footy forever. I'm going to, you know, when I make enough money to never in. work another day in my life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, who knows yeah. what could happen? And then this is where I was six months ago. Like I did my knee. I came off the ground in round 15 and the doctors are like, mate, you've done your ACL. Like your ACL yeah, shot. Like, like, No, it's not like we have been wrong in the past, but like your knee's blue. It's Pretty probably cooked. your ACL. Like <laughs> yeah. prepare for the worst. So I'm like sitting there in the, the night before my scan. I'm like, all right. 12 months so I come back around 15 the following year which means that's the reserve so it's going to take me four or five games to get back up to speed mm-hmm. so that's the season's done so I'm going to miss a year and a half in that time these young guys are going to play in my position they're going to have another year under the belt I'm like and I'm out of contract too so I'm like I'm done I'm laying there in bed like I'm done like my career's done and then yes to sit here now and it's like my knee's sweet like yeah. I've been like MCL like sucked but missed five games that's yeah. it and I'm back like full training now and I'm at 100%. a new club and I've got more years of my career and now I'm getting into coaching like it's, it's crazy so but that was a real like alright I'm going to have to start at that time I was like I've got to start thinking about what am I going to do after footy Yeah. but now to sit here with a few year, more years up in my sleeve but now I'm really starting to look at the next chapter and coaching is a big passion for me so mm. yeah I didn't think I'd be sitting here I'd be yeah where I was a couple of months ago thinking I was done. So Yeah, nice. Hectic. Yeah. Far out. Right. And the and you're like North a pretty pretty good bunch of people. Yeah. Pretty good great. club. Yeah. Well the head coach is so when I was when I was playing basketball in America, David Noble, who's the coach now, he's a Tasmanian as well. So we knew each other from so his his dad and my pop played together. Wow. In, um, played footy together in Hobart. And uh, he was the head of football at the Crows. Mm -hmm. And so when he was actually flew to America twice to try and get me to come back to play, he's like, mate, I remember you from your junior footy days, like, because I followed you in Tassie, like, I reckon you could come back and still be good at football. I don't know, like, Mm. I've played for eight years, but he's like, mate, I reckon you can do it. Like, we're going to back you in, we're going to offer you a contract, we reckon you can do it. And so... He was, and now, so when he called me, full circle. Like, full circle, basically, yeah. When he called me this time, he's like, mate, here we are again. Like, let's let's finally work together. Like, come on, let's do it. Mm. And so he, he's there. The When I walked in the doors of the Crows, my development coach, so the, basically my coach that was in charge of getting me up to speed, he's there as well at North. So there was a s- strong connection, a lot of trust to go there. Mm. So, and it's been a really fun group. I've only been there for two weeks, but yeah. I feel like I'm. Of, part of the crew yeah already. part of the crew it's a really mm. fun group really oh, motivated nice. group so that's yeah good. I just, early days but I'm yeah I'm confident that I've made as hard as it was to leave here I've yeah. made the call yeah, yeah 100% what a journey yeah I'm just it's blown away because you know you can read so much and uh, you know talk to Beck and things yeah. like that but yeah to hear it from you and what, what you've got to do it's like absolutely insane and yeah. I'm super keen though to see what you know what the future holds yeah and um and yeah the, the only other thing I wanted to ask is like do you have any tips for those younger um people wanting to kind of either get into um like sports like yeah. professionally or like even just like a competitive industry like do you have any tips yeah well I was fortunate enough I had a really good friendship group and support crew for a young age and some some people don't some people do mm. but i was fortunate enough to i surrounded myself with like-minded people and i yeah. feel like this ls is the same everyone's chasing the vibe everyone's got everyone's on the same i look at the brand values pinned to the wall here it's like mm. everyone's on the same page so if you can surround yourself with people that are like-minded then you find yourselves tracking along a similar path and mm. doing the same things and wanting to achieve the same thing so I put myself in a strong circle from an early age and that just sort of set me up. And, and then I've been, I mean, for me, I'm lucky I've gone to professional environments where everyone wants the same thing. Not everyone, like you obviously you get players that are there for different reasons yep. and you get different personalities, but you gel to the ones that you align with. And so, I yeah, I guess it's easier said than done. Sometimes you might start off with a strong group of friends or strong support network and as time goes on, you might go get different mm. ideas of what you want to do but you got to I guess identify whether or not that they're what they do and what they stand for aligns with what you want to do so yeah. um, having a really strong like-minded friendship group was was a big one for me and at the end of the day that's a cliche you have like if you're yeah. going to make it you have to you have to work you have to work hard like, yeah. yeah and if you don't you can only make it so far and you'll get found out mm. and i've been in that many different environments where i've seen that many like you can walk in the door and you can see the people like yeah you're not going to get, you're not going to make it. Or you can look at this guy and you're like, gee, this guy, well, this guy's 
got something. Yeah. Like, there's something different. There's something different about about this person here. So yeah. no, you'll, I, you'll get yeah. found out eventually. So yeah. you may as well start building foundations from an early age. And again, I was lucky because I was forced to do that. At 15, I moved to the AOS and I was that's all I did was train. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough, but I want like obviously I wanted that too. So yeah. if you can set the earlier you can set foundations for yourself and surround yourself with the same people is mm. is, is massive. Yeah. It's like huge. Like you said, I, I 100% agree. Like even just working here, I've been here over a year now and um, come from more of a corporate yep. background to here and just like a younger you know, group of people. Even yes. Jason's only 34, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. And just it's just like a family more yeah. than anything. Yeah. And we all have like a, the same goal um, to, to to hit and to meet kind of thing and, and it's, you know, to progress and to grow. And when you're all kind of on that, on the you know, same page, yes. being able to move forward together and uh, have the support around you as well. Like, you know, before now, you know, I kind of, I kind of started this podcast just because I had a yeah. little bit of experience in radio and podcasting and things like that. And, but I knew how to do this part, but I was like, guys, I'm going to need some help to like, yeah. to film it, to get it yeah, on yeah. YouTube, you know, and Elliot's in you know, and the whole team is just like, yeah, sweet. Let right. me know what you need. Yeah. That's you know, what we're happy, like. you know, to help you do, um, even our graphic designers, like we need a new, like, you know, <laughs> this and we need this. Yeah. And, you know, so it's like also making sure you, you bring people in if, if you yeah. need, um, need support as well. Yeah, so, 100%. and I guess, and be authentic. Yeah. Be unique. Be authentic. And might not, might not always rub people the right way. But if if you're true to yourself and your values, then yep. that's that's a key as well. Just being mm. unique and being yourself, being authentic. So that was a big one to head north too. Is that they're one of their one of their without getting too much detail. Mm. They're one of their trademarks or one of their their, their values is be yourself, mm. be authentic. So I've been in environments where it's you fall in line. Otherwise, otherwise you get so. Yeah. Otherwise you get the boot, but that's the thing. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be myself. Yeah. You know, if if people 100%. don't like it, like yeah, well, like it's, it's, maybe it's not the right place. You right. know, like, we all work like we want the same thing, mm. but we're gonna work like I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna be a dick. I'm not gonna like yeah. be an asshole. And to, but we all want the same for us. We all want to win a flag, but mm. each path is is different, Slightly and each different. way we go about it is different. But ultimately, we all want the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So. Oh, got the wise cool. words. No, nah, that was fun. That Perfect. was good. I only rambled a little bit, but no, um, no, that was, uh, no, was that was great. Well, um, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming in and joining nah. us. But um, what's uh like if people want to jump on and and um, I guess follow your your, your journey. Like even I don't know, do you post you on Instagram much? Yeah, or? I'm on Instagram. Yeah, I haven't evolved onto to TikTok yet. Is that, <laughs> is that the next step? I don't know. I think they might. I think it, there's some TikToks about you, be. by the way. There are TikToks. Yeah. Are there? Oh. There's only a few. I'm, like- already, I'm already trying to work on my, like, being more present at home. So, yeah, it might trying be. Trying to put the phone. Yes, but I've heard you can lose hours on TikTok. Oh, yeah. I think, hours. like, the average amount of time people spend on TikTok at the moment, I don't know what the age bracket is yeah, and things yeah. like that, but it's like 80 minutes a day, which actually trumps, you know, Instagram yeah, and all would. of that. Are yeah. you on Twitter as well? What's, yeah, I'm on Twitter. What's yeah. your handle for both? Uh, it's H Greenwood 3. Brilliant. I both haven't updated them yet. Yeah, I yeah. Like, I was three in college, so I don't want to lose my blue check. So I left <laughs> yeah, it on that. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, yeah, yeah cool. but Instagrams. Instagrams the main one. A little bit of Twitter. Um, yeah. But yeah, Instagrams yeah, cool. the main one. Yeah. Well, everyone, go follow, follow along. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. That was awesome. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. In. Look forward to jumping on again when we're in HQ. Hundred percent. Cool. Sounds good.